Welcome to Power Your Profits podcast, your friendly guide in bringing your business revenue to the next level. Listen as host Dr. Susie Carter hears inspiring stories of success from her fellow entrepreneurs and transformational leaders. Prepare to make significant change to your strategies as they unravel the secrets of building multi-million dollar businesses and the most effective tips on finance, marketing, and sales accountability. If you want to take your first steps towards explosive business growth, this podcast is for you. Without further ado, here is your host, Dr. Susie. Welcome to this episode of Power Your Profits. I am your host, Susie Carter, and today's guest is interesting. Angela is an integrative productivity coach. She's a writer. She's a speaker. She serves as a transformational catalyst to business owners, entrepreneurs, and sales professionals. Angela's signature method, Productivity Flow, integrates emotion, energy, time, and focuses to help clients with their natural productivity flow. It's not hacks, it's not strategy, it works with our natural divine gift to achieve higher levels of success in business. Thank you so much, Angela, for being here today. I am so excited to interview you, not just for who you are, but just doing my research. I'm like, "Uh uh-huh, your website's perfect. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Yes, I need her. So tell everybody what your magic is, like what you love doing and who do you serve? Okay. Well, first, thank you for having me on the show. I'm really excited to talk to you too. Um, and let's see my magic. Well, um, my magic has always been productivity and sales and doing it differently than most people do. And uh, I tend to focus on the people who aren't served by what the traditional methods are. You know, for me, productivity was like, you know, I saw my mom just like do it amazingly. And I just couldn't figure out. It was like, I couldn't be her, but I didn't know how to be her. And every time she would get me organized and set up and she'd do it all for me, I couldn't maintain it. And I had no idea why. It was like, what? I don't understand. And then, so it was like just going through and figuring out that it wasn't just me that there's a whole subset of people out there who are like me and that we need something different. And so that's where my my magic came from. (laughs) Yes, I love that. That's such a great distinction because I'm the same way, right? Totally. With with finances, right? CPA would sit down with me and I felt like the biggest Mm -hmm. idiot. I'm like, what? (laughs) Everybody else not an idiot. So (laughs) I can appreciate that. And I love that really catering it to the client versus it's red, blue, and yellow. And that's all there is. Like, I love blue or yellow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So what was your inspiration for creating your productive flow and process? Yeah. Well, you know, I I could say I did it for me and I would totally be lying. (laughs) Because I wanted to to fix my own issues, right? And I I can do that without creating this, right? right? And so when it came down to it, it was just I realized that the people that I was working with yeah. had the same problems that I had. They yeah. had the same background that I had. They had such similar uh, things that they wanted out of life and all the same things holding them back. And I was like, wait a minute. You mean it's not just me? <laughs> There's other people what like that. Like, what were the problems? Share with us what the problem. Yeah. What are well, the problems they had? Like, what? Yeah. What so, are we so we don't feel alone. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. So it was feeling this sense of never being able to get anything done. It's like knowing what you're supposed to do, but not being able to make yourself actually do it. And then, like, I don't even know why. Like, what happened to my day? Right. right. Or, or, um why is my life so stressful? Why am I always so burnt out and overwhelmed? And all these other people seem to be just making everything happen. And and I can't, and I don't know why. Right. That, that was really what it boiled down to. And what I heard, and this is really, really similar stories, was that there was always some feeling inside that came from a sort of a buildup of childhood experiences of feeling like I'm either too much, I'm not enough, sometimes either or, depending on the day or the person, right. and and just feeling like they, they really wanted to go out and help and serve other people in a really big way. And it was coming from a very heart-centered place. It's saying, you know, I 
I don't want other people to feel or experience what I have felt or experienced. I don't want them to be alone. I don't want them to not have this product or service or whatever that changed your own life. I want to help other people change their lives too. And so what happened is that when they when they have these experiences from from childhood or or wherever they've picked them up along the way that makes them feel less than somehow then everything that they try to do is going to filter through that internal story and that internal story is going to hold them back and prevent them from doing the things and so instead they pull in something else something else something else and they start to fill their lives with all this clutter and disorganization and all these other things that create blocks and reasons why they can't move forward taking bold action on the things that are actually going to drive their business forward. Hmm. Well, I love that we can take bold action, but then there's just still the, it's never enough. It's mm-hmm. not enough, but, you know, so I yeah. hear you saying is you recognize it and reframe it to have a see it differently to accomplish something different? Well, the the process that I follow, I call it productive flow. And there's four elements of, of productivity. And it's emotion, energy, time, and focus. Mm-hmm. And I always say productivity is rooted in emotion because it's how we feel on the inside that drives how we're going to perform out in the world. Mm-hmm. And so you know how it's like you, you wake up one morning and you're thinking, man, I look great today. <laughs> like my hair is working, my outfit is working, like I feel on fire and like everything goes great for you that day. And then you go to sleep and you don't sleep well that night for some reason. Probably because your brain was just wired because you're were, you're were so like lit up about the great day you had, right? right? And then so you don't sleep well and the next morning you wake up and you just like everything's wrong. And for whatever reason your whole day just goes downhill. Right. And it's it's all based on how you're feeling inside. And so what I do is I work through those four elements of productivity, but I start backwards. So I start at focus. And the thing is, is that, you know, most of us, especially those of us entrepreneurs, right, building our own thing, doing our own thing, we have a lot of different interests, a lot of different things that light us up and we're smart and we're capable and so we we have all these things in front of us and we see potential in everything. And so what happens is that we tend to get off track and start going in different directions all the time instead of being able to focus in on one thing. Then people tell us traditionally, let's focus on your numbers. Let's focus on you know how much money you want to make and then we'll backtrack things from there. When in reality, for people like us, we need to focus on the kind of life we want to build because the life usually is what's driving us to want to do something independent. It's why we don't want a job and we want to be free to do what we feel like when we feel like. Yes. You're listening to another episode of Power Your Profits podcast. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Are you tired of struggling to take your business to the next level? Power Your Profits is the game-changing book you've been waiting for. Dr. Susie Carter, creator of the Predictable Success Method, reveals her proven strategies for explosive growth. From daily operations to marketing systems, this comprehensive guide empowers you to achieve predictable revenue and profit growth. Don't miss out on this invaluable wisdom. Transform your business today. Find your copy at books.poweryourprofits.com. Are you tired of pouring resources into strategies that don't work? Say hello to Dr. Susie Carter, your future fractional COO. With Dr. Susie in your corner, your business can skyrocket to seven figures and beyond. With a track record of creating thriving businesses, trust that you are in good hands. Head over to coo.poweryourprofits.com and let us put some magic into your business growth. And so we have to think about the experiences we want to have, how we want to grow in the world, and and how we want to contribute, how we want to give back. And so when we do that, I I call it setting our GPS and we get in our car, you know, we set the GPS and create a a map of the most efficient way to get to our destination. But we don't tend to do that for our lives. So when we do, then everything that comes at you, ideas, thoughts, new software, whatever that lights you up, (laughs) whatever shiny object you see in front of you, it has to filter through that lens of your focus. 
of right. your your GPS destination for your life. And see, does this get me there? Yes or no? Or is this just a, a side road for me? I love that because I can see in my life when I've been either lost or burnt out, like my focus mm-hmm. was gone. Like either I hit it, I did it, like whatever it was, I accomplished mm-hmm. the goal. And I'm like, okay, why am I doing more of this whole number board? Right? <laughs> They go, oh, and then you come to a point in business where you're seasoned and you know, like if you say, I'm going to set a $5 million goal. Well, mm-hmm. if you know what that's going to take, you're like, you can set it, but it's not real because you know, and you're like, I don't want to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So totally. it's realigning that focus. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And once you have a focus, it's so easy to map out your time because then you're thinking in terms of not just how much can I fit into a day? But what do I want my day to look and feel like? You know, one of the things that that I've done is I realized that Fridays were days that I didn't want to be working at, ever. Friday, I was like, felt like I was already on my weekend. And Mondays, I torturous. felt like... Fridays are torturous, I know. <laughs> Mondays, I felt like I love Mondays. Mondays are my favorite day of the week. And I wanted it to just be free to do whatever I wanted to do. So I'm like, I'm not taking any client appointments on Monday ever. I'm going to make Monday my day, whatever I want to do on Monday. And so what I ended up doing also, too, is just understanding, like, what was my natural ebb and flow of energy throughout the day? Mm -hmm. And I realized that I'm really good in the morning, but around two o'clock, like my energy would start to drop off. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, nine o'clock to two o'clock done. Those are my working hours. But by the way, that's only the first three weeks of the month because the last week of the month, I really need a break. So I take the last week off. So then I just started the 45 hour week work month, 45 hour work month, 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 (laughs) right? Month. Like, no, no, not week. (laughs) Not week. No, month. (laughs) Month. Okay. That again, because that that was my next question. Like, how do you do this 45 hour month? Because yeah, it's so, so funny that you say that because Fridays I said the same thing. I'm like, I need space, but I put it as a work day, like to work on the business. Uh-huh. Yeah, I really don't want to. Like, I'm like, then don't, right? Then, then don't, right? So I work Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Right, and only the first three weeks of the month, and then that's all I do. Monday is my day, so if I want to work, I can, but I don't have to. Monday's my day. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are completely detached off, do whatever I want. Um, very similar to Monday, actually. <laughs> right. And then only the first three weeks. So I get a last week off. Are really disciplined to not schedule any work stuff? So. Yeah, no, I don't. No, that's not my thing. I don't want to do it because I want to detach. And so like, you know, my husband and I have an RV. We go camping a lot. We have an ownership interest in a campground. It's about an hour from us. It's up in the mountains. So we go up there a lot. Um, we frequently take four-day weekends um, and go camping. Um, sometimes we travel with my husband. He's he's a regional project manager. So he travels around to these different apartment communities. He's in charge of all the construction and maintenance projects. And so and we like just do our thing, you know, and I homeschool my son um, he's the only one we have left. He's nine. Uh, we have four other kids that are grown and out of the house. I homeschooled all of them too. And, um, we've got three dogs and it's just wow. great. You know, is the three dogs with the new puppy? The three dogs is with the new puppy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so what, what kind of revenue do you do with 45 hour work month? I just, I'm at, I need to have a breakthrough of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really whatever I want to create. Okay. So for me, I have six one to one client spots. Okay. And I do those at nine o'clock and an 11 and 11 o'clock each day, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Okay. So each one of those clients pays me $2,500 a month to have three calls with me. Awesome. Okay. And then I also have my membership program, which is Productive Flow Prosperity. And so that's $47 a month. I do a live stream once a week. Yeah. And that's infinitely scalable. Yes. And it's designed so that one person brings in four more (laughs) because they create their own accountability groups. So it's very easy to scale it. Then I have my, um, my private prosperity groups. So corporations can say, hey, I've got the sales team. They're not performing. Can you run a private group for our team? Sure. 
five person minimum, four ninety seven a month per person, right? So then that adds up. And then I also run the Journey Alchemist Collective with three other coaches. So we do divide that one four ways, but we have a program there where we combine um, my tools with human design and rapid transformational hypnotherapy and women's wisdom. And so the four of us come together and we do our group once a week as well. And that one's three thirty three a month between us. So I love that. Yeah. So very, I just very simple, very concise. Yeah. Right. Very simple, very easy, and doesn't require a lot of my time. So um, the the group that I run that we do one, I do it with three other coaches. So there's four of us. I only have to do one presentation a month in that group. That's it. For my um, membership group, it's one live stream per week. That's it. And only the first three weeks. Right. Then the works. other ones are the yeah. three I have my, my hand. Yeah, that's it. It's done. And so I can create the income I want because I've created that the one to one that I really enjoy doing, but yeah. I don't want to get overwhelmed with it. So I have six. That's it. Then I have my my group that I do once a month with the one group, once a week with the other group, and then my private groups that I have room for three of those. And right. that's it. That's my day. I love it. I love how you just create simplicity. Like mm-hmm. you, you could, you could hear someone could get overwhelmed, but you, the way that you've mapped it out, it's simplicity, right? Which I it, love. It's simplicity. I'm always showing up doing the same thing right. because I'm showing up doing the thing that I most love. I delegate certain aspects. So, like you know, I have my own podcast, but I all I do is show up and record. That's it. And I only do one a week. That goes out to the production team. They do everything. So I don't do that. I have somebody that runs my social media. I don't do any of that, um, you know, and th- and that's pretty much it. So I don't. Well, I love your model. If you listen to Angela's model, every member brings in four, right? So the referrals that keep coming in that go mm-hmm. into their programs, that's genius. Thank you. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> I love it. So let's let's just shift a little bit, right? Because mm-hmm. we talk about wealth strategies in this group and when I hear the wealth of time, because that's a huge wealth mm-hmm. strategy. That is, you know, probably the entrepreneur's biggest frustration is mm-hmm. time. What are some other wealth strategies that you've used in your life to build your own personal wealth? Um, are we talking still about wealth of time or are we talking about other different types of wealth besides wealth of time? All the all the wealth, right? Because a yeah. lot of wealth is just money. Yes, money is one piece. Gotcha. So your yeah. business is one piece. If you do other yeah. fun strategies you know, yeah. great. And then what else? Sure. Do you yeah. Do your wealth. Yeah. So I see there's a lot of different things that I feel like I, I have integrated into my life. Um, one of them is a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I am always researching, studying, learning. I don't include that in my work time. I feel like it's my, my personal hobby and interest. Yeah. Um, my husband loves that as well. And we have a lot of the same interests. So, you know, it's like at night, you'll see us watching documentaries, you know, we're not big TV show people. So we watch documentaries and we have all these different streaming channels where we get all these documentaries and different things from And we read books and we share that information and then discuss it between us. And that feels really, really good to be able to not just to do that for myself, but to have a partner in doing that is awesome. Um, We have an amazing family. And it, it, it's not always been amazing. <laughs> it's you like perfectly honest. Else, it does right? take work. Um, but we have five kids, you know, and five kids that bring us lots of just life, lots of life. And, it, you know, we have Christmas here coming up and um, two of our kids live really close by. And and we'll be here. They're always here for everything. And then one of our kids from Florida is coming up. So we're going to have four of our five kids with us here for Christmas wow. and for a whole week, you know, and it's like amazing. And yeah, like not to have the dread that everybody's coming. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, and and it just it feels really good to be able to have the connections and the relationships that we have with our kids and with each other, my, my husband and I. And I feel like we've just, we've built this life 
That's just amazing. And it's right. it's not about money or stuff. It's about the relationships that we've right. created together and how we can come together and just laugh about the stupidest things, you know, and just have fun. But I feel like there's there's a lot to be said for that. Um, absolutely. And um and Trina, I remember I moved out when I was 17 and never looked back and family took this dread time. And yeah. so kids got of age and they're like, hey, let's go to dinner. And I, in the beginning, I'm like, they just want me to pay. Right. Yes. I was used to you're <laughs> done with your parents and they're going to move yeah. on. So assume they wouldn't. Yeah. No, we hanging out with you, Mikey. Like, hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in right. San Francisco with my daughter right now. I've been here yeah. for seven days. Mm-hmm. It's like. I know you need to go home, but I don't want you to go home. But you, you need to do, and I'm like, yeah. go home either. <laughs> like, what a blessing that you know we love each other, I keep traveling, and that is yeah. one of the wealth secrets that is so important. But it's work. Yeah. Like you said, mm-hmm. happen not by accident; it happens by design. Mm-hmm. Like, it does. Your life is by design, which I love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if I'm just starting this journey, mm-hmm. what should I absolutely must do besides make an appointment with you? Right. Because I think that's mm-hmm. some, when you're stuck and you keep doing the same thing over and over, you need a different coach. Right. And so I always look at every year, what's the coach I need right now? What do I need yeah. now in this moment? Because I'm like, yeah. you you know, lifelong learner, love education. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes the bigger you get, your ego gets in the way thinking, well, I already know how to do that. Well, you know how to do it how you did it. Mm-hmm. You don't know how to do it in a new way to go, wait, do you want something different? I need different yeah. perspective. So what's that thing? Yeah. What should I be doing? Or what What would you say someone should be looking for to yeah. somebody like you? Okay. I feel like that's two different questions. <laughs> so I mean, I said a lot because I'm like so okay. excited. That's all right. I'm going to address them. You're both. a good listener. <laughs> Thank you. So um, the first is I feel like something that they can do right now is setting your GPS. That's something you can do right now. It, it is something that I help guide my clients in doing, um, but it's something that you can do on your own. And it's really simple. It's just really looking at those three categories. So experiences, growth, and contribution. And if you want to break it down by year, break it down by year. Look at 2023 and say, what do I want to experience this year? And think personal, business, all of it. What do I want to experience this year? How do I want to grow this year? What do I want to learn? How do I want to expand myself? And then what do I want to contribute? How do I want to give back this year? What do I want to give? How do I want to support others? So this could be something that is something that you're paid to do, but it could also be maybe something of of value that you could add. Right. But it could also be something where you're just you're just giving, volunteering or or um, contributing a portion of your proceeds or, um, you know, setting up something, giving back to a family during the holidays. It doesn't matter, whatever it is. But right. how can you contribute this year? What's, what's something that you want to give back? Because it's those three things that drive what you really want in life. And you're, you're you know, a lot of times we when we set goals, we set goals that are a means to an end, yeah. but not really the end goal, Right. So a lot of people, they set money goals. They're like, oh, I want to earn, you know, $300,000 or $400,000 this year. It's like, okay, great. Great. You know, well, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> yeah, then what? <laughs> what are you going to do with that? So it, when you when you set a money goal, it's really hard to achieve it because it, it's not about the money. It's Money's just a tool. It's a resource that allows you to do these other things, experience, growth, contribution. So it's those things that are your actual end goals that take you where you want to go, right? So don't spend all day on this. Like give yourself five minutes per category and just write down everything you can think of in that five minutes. So 15 minutes tops for this exercise. I love that. It doesn't have to be long. You no. can do it and tell my students, you know. Yeah. And if you like they're struggling over a business plan. You know, quit struggling. Yeah. Just put down yeah. what you think and then let it yeah. go. And you know, so I you know, when minutes. we take too much time with it, we we end up setting it aside and not doing it at all because we feel like it's not done or it's not good enough or whatever. It's like set your timer for five minutes experiences and then do the same thing for the other two. Fifteen minutes, you're done and you can look at it and suddenly you're like, I didn't even know I really wanted that. Right. 
But when I thought of it and it, I wrote it down, suddenly it's like, I'm feeling kind of emotional over it. Like, this is something I really want. And it, it just strikes you and you're like, ah. Oh. And then it, your motivation is so much easier to maintain throughout yeah. the year because you're focused on things that are really important to you. And this is what sets your goals. It's what gives you your goals. Right. Whole different context of way of looking at it. Okay, let's shift a little yeah. bit. Sure. So let's look. You've been doing this for a while, right? You're 20 years. Raised five kids. <laughs> Raising. That last one's nine. So the last one's nine. <laughs> that little bit of yeah. But what would you say that in your life, 20 years of doing this work and then mm -hmm. everything else in your life, what's been your biggest challenge, failure, mistake, and then mm -hmm. what you from it as an entrepreneur? Yeah. Um, so when my my okay, so my husband and I are yours, mine, and ours with our kids. So he had two, I had two, we got together, and then we had one extra. So when I was 31, I divorced my first husband. We had a five-year-old and a two-year-old. And all of a sudden I was a single mom. Now I've been self-employed my entire adult life. And I this I was I come from the real estate industry. I was a realtor before I was a coach. And the real estate market. So I was coaching just realtors back in that point. And the real estate market tanked right then. <laughs> and so it was like six years where I was the sole provider for me and my two kids. Yeah. And it, I had, I was struggling, really struggling for business. And I was in this space of also trying to heal not just from my my marriage, which my my ex husband is bipolar, so and he would not seek help for that. He was diagnosed during the uh, marriage counseling, would not seek help, denied that he even had the issue, and so I was trying to heal from this relationship that I had to walk away from for myself and for my kids, and then I was also trying to heal from all the childhood trauma that I had experienced as a kid. Yeah. Not abuse, just trauma. Well-intentioned, loving parents that didn't know what to do with me. <laughs> I just want to clarify. Right. But um, it was all of that that I was, all of a sudden, it was like all of it was dumped on me. And I was trying to process and sort through all of that while trying to figure out how to keep a roof over our heads and food on the table. Yeah. And it was a real struggle. It really was. And... I think the biggest the biggest challenge in all of it was saying, like, I believe it's going to get better. Like, this is not it. Yeah. This is not forever. This is going to get better. So I don't need to figure out my whole life right now. I just need to figure out today. Right. And tomorrow I'll figure out tomorrow. And so I was just taking one step at a time, reminding myself, this is temporary and everything is going to keep happening for you, not to you. You're not a victim. You're fine. You're getting through this and everything's going to be good. Yes. And I just kept telling myself that every day. Right. And it it did. Thank it you did. for being honest because it's true, right? <laughs> the black cloud will follow you and you're like, you either compartmentalize mm -hmm. and dealing with it, mm -hmm. right? You're stuffing it in the squishy squash. Yeah. You do. <laughs> I've tried that strategy that doesn't work. It just bubbles up somewhere else. <laughs> yep. It manifests in many other things. So yeah. thank you for sharing. Yeah. That was yeah, no problem. So what do you want to be remembered for, Angela? Um, I want to be remembered for shifting a paradigm, for just shaking things up. You know, it's funny. Um, I started out in sales when I was 14 and commission-based sales. And um, I worked commission-based sales all through high school and and just after that, and then went out and got my real estate license. And I realized that sales was something that I loved because I loved helping other people find something that lit them up, that excited right. them, that made them feel hope and inspiration. Mm -hmm. And all the sales training was completely opposite of that. Yeah. And and productivity. I found over time 
that productivity, all the 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 programs and the planners and a lot of the coaches, they've never ever had a productivity problem in their life. So mm. they don't, they're just naturally organized and put together. And so they're trying to teach people that have productivity problems how to be like them. And that's and not who we are. Right? Yeah. It's so interesting. So yeah. interesting. It's like sales training was designed by people who are sales hunters, not yeah. sales matchers. Right. Where people like me, I'm a sales matcher, not a hunter. Right. I'm not after the all the dollars, right? right. I'm not in right. it for the numbers. I'm in it because I want to serve. I want to show up and serve. And so if we if we shift how we look at productivity for people to actually have a problem with it, and we shift how we look at sales for people who are in it to serve, then now the the 80 percent that gets left behind because only 20 percent are succeeding right. they're not left behind anymore and they learn how to succeed because we're addressing who they are as an individual at their heart center right and we're creating something specific for them i love that distinction interesting when i saw i tried traditional college right that's mm -hmm. not what i love to learn which i always thought i was because mm -hmm. i didn't like traditional school i didn't and either I signed them for this course, had a study, and it was a mm -hmm. line study course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like a self study course. In my yeah. If I had a study, mm -hmm. it was so stupid. Like, you got to be kidding, right? <laughs> if I knew yeah. how to do it, I would do it and I wouldn't be here. <laughs> because that whole thing that you're saying, it, it's so niched, which I never really thought about productivity people. Yeah. Our experts, they're just organized. My daughter just, yeah. for fun, she would want to organize the pantry mm -hmm. oh mom can i organize a pantry i'm like i don't yeah. know okay sure <laughs> yeah you know my my mom had she only buys clothes in outfits and then she would wear that outfit wash it put it back into the closet in the same order yeah so that she was constantly moving through her clothes in a specific order and then her recipes for dinner were organized on a three month rotating schedule down to what bread you were eating with your meal. Everything was three months. So, you know, and then her her grocery list, she wouldn't just write stuff down that we were out of. No, she had a list on her computer that was organized by aisle it appeared in the grocery store. And then she would have it with check boxes so she can just check things off and then print out her list with the things and then have it by aisle so that as she walked through the aisle, she could grab the things that she needed. And I just, you know, I like to go to the grocery store when I'm hungry and figure out what do I feel like eating today? Right. <laughs> you know? So it's like making this week. I'll make that. That doesn't exactly. make my eyes cross, right? I'm like, oh, I, feel, oh I, I just all of a sudden feel like I'm in a box. I'm having a season. Exactly. Yes. I respect you know? it. I love it. I just couldn't do that. It's right? just not the way we do things. And our yeah. brains function differently. It's like the problem with school for me, because I was terrible at it too, was that they were always teaching by talking at you. And I needed to sit down and do it for myself. If I couldn't sit down and do it for myself, then I wouldn't do it. And if I wasn't interested in it, well, then I wasn't going to do it. So that's where I, I ended up having a big problem. It's like, um, 11th grade, I was in AP English class. It was the first year they'd offered AP to 11th grade. And there were only 10 kids in the entire grade that got into that class. And I was one of them. But they wanted us to read these specific books. And some of the books I didn't like. And I was like, I'm not I'm not reading that. And then I, I got a D in the class. And my teacher would always yell at me and tell me, you know, why don't you apply yourself? <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. It made me feel icky inside. I was like, I don't like this, but this is a terrible book. I don't not, right. not want to read this, you know? So I didn't. Not great. Like the yeah. way you can really support your children. You that's mm -hmm. you're, I think we're in the green room that you homeschooled your children, maybe yep. set up mm -hmm. right? To go, what a gift to really Yeah. I mean, there's schools are now starting to realize that mm -hmm. you know, in this next generation, but our generation. We just got mm -hmm. over the head of feeling not good enough, yeah. and bad grades, and that defined yeah. you. Like yeah. these my grades, mm -hmm. stupid, right? Yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah, but you know when you when you homeschool your kids, and I didn't always homeschool them. I pulled them out all for different reasons. It 
the really ended up being the same time, but they all had their own things that they were strong in and their other things that they were weak in. Mm -hmm. And there were certain things that they want to study that weren't offered in school. You know, my, my daughter, who's our, our next youngest, um, she's 19 years old. She's already certified as a health coach. Um, and, and she already has clients. So she's already independently employed. Um, she has a, another job on the side to help her subsidize. You know, she lives on her own. She has a brand new car she purchased. Right. Um, you know, she's been on her own. This is year two now. Right. And all of this because she was homeschooled and she has an extreme understanding of dietary issues and, and uh, food and nutrition and all these things. It was what drove her interest to become a health coach. Right. And the only reason she didn't get it earlier was because they told her when she was 16 and wanted to take the course that she could take it, but they couldn't certify her unless she was 18 when she took the course. So she had to wait until she turned 18 to take it. Isn't that wild? <laughs> yeah. What does that matter, right? Yeah. Though they said she wouldn't understand the material as, as well as she would at 18. <laughs> So, Angela, how do people get a hold of you? I know you have a prize for us, which I love, love, love your generosity. So oh, how do people you. get a hold of you? How do we find you on the internet? How do we find you on social? Yeah. Um, AngelaKristenTaylor.com, Kristen with a K and an E. Um, or you can go to ProductiveFlow.com. Productive Flow is where I have all my my programs, memberships, and stuff like that you can sign up for. Um, and then you are always welcome. I do um, productivity breakthrough sessions. That's just a free session. You're welcome to to come and jump in on that. Um, so I'll put the links in the show notes so that you all have those. You want to take advantage of that just to see where can you move the dial, right? And one tech yeah. can be a game changer. Oh, a hundred percent. And that's the one thing if, if, if you're listening to this, you decide like, what is this breakthrough session? I would like to do that. Um, there is a very detailed form when you go to book that session. And if you're very detailed in filling it out, I can get right to the root of exactly what's going on with your productivity within five minutes. We've got it nailed. So is that the um, productivity audit? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Look, yeah. see, I was going to do it. I'm like, I didn't get to do yeah. it before the call. I'm like, I yeah. want to do this. Yeah, it's, it's a it's very really detailed. Candy. Look, I said 45 hour month. She goes, no, 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 darling, week. <laughs> no, no, no. You said week and I said month. Yeah, you said, look, I get so confused. I'm like, <laughs> it's it. It's got a, I got to have a new paradigm about it, right? Because I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I just want a 45 hour week. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I did. I did all that. No, I don't yeah. want, I don't want my life to be like that. I like, I love my freedom and I love to be able to go and do other things. So that's why we're entrepreneurs. So thank mm -hmm. you for being here. Thank you for sharing your wisdom your magic, you. your generosity, your authenticity, love the transparency. And if Angela resonates with you, please share it with your tribe and community. Please like and share this, send to the clip so that your friends can have more time with the people that they love and create a different kind of wealth besides money. I'm your host, Susie Carter, my guest, Angela. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Power Your Profits podcast. Let these building blocks from today's most successful industry leaders equip you with the necessary resources and tools to finally establish the highly profitable business of your dreams. Want to hear more? Listen to more episodes at www.poweryourprofitspodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the show. Now is your time to rise to the top of your game. So be sure to catch our next episode. Until next time.